Hello everybody, welcome back to Urkel Masters Hardcore Challenge. Today we've got more Illrath to destroy. Yep, don't care about you. Um, I didn't really mean to I didn't really mean to chat, to be honest. Um, I want to just destroy you. Um, so there's four here. Fifo is going to take them all down. Um, I didn't have much to talk about. Uh, well, I didn't have much time to talk about the um, the actual battle that we're doing here. Spathy versus Illrath. Um, it's quite difficult. You just have to sort of, as I say, just... Actually, I think I did talk about it now that I remember. Um, yeah, you basically just have to uh, get into the sort of perfect range where the Illrath um, appears and the, uh, the the missiles just about sort of hit it. But getting that range is quite difficult because, of course, at the same time, you don't want to be hit by the fire because, well, we've already got Fwifo on board. He's a very solitary sort of guy. He, just, he likes to be on his own. He doesn't like, you know, people sort of getting in his way. It is confusing because there does appear to be two Spathy in the ship, controlling the ship. Doesn't make much sense considering that the only Spathy we have is Fwifo. Um, all the rest of our crew are human crew and Pekunk crew. And so that picture is slightly breaks the immersion, but you know we'll, we'll forget about it for now. Um, we'll just pretend that Fwifo is both of them, but he's sort of... He's sort of so agile and, and all over the place. He sort of he sort of appears to be in two places at once. That's that's how I see it. Um, he's just he's just all over the place in that little cabin. I don't know how big these ships really are, to be honest. It's, it's the the one thing about this game that I definitely noticed like immediately is that the sort of sizes of the ships. I don't I don't quite understand how big these are meant to be because obviously in Neely they're like the size of pl like the size of planets. The lander's pretty big on the surface of planets. Obviously it's not meant to be like a proper scale, but it means it's actually quite difficult to get a real idea of how big these things are. And also, in Neely, the flagship is actually about the same size as any of the other ships, which I don't think is quite right, considering, especially on the menu, on the right-hand side, it looks about you know, ten times bigger than all the other ships. And the Sumatra as well, it's hard to tell how big that is, because um, it appears different sizes depending on you know the cutscene or the or in the game or whatever, so I don't know. I don't. I don't know if there's any sources anywhere that really specify like the absolute size of these these ships. Um, but it'd be interesting to find out. I mean, I guess you could sort of guess from the fact that these these ships hold roughly ten to thirty crew on average. Um, some of them hold more or less, but um, I don't know. I, I just don't know how big. I don't. Know, I can't remember. I've never. I've never watched Star Trek. You see, so I don't. How many people had was on the Enterprise? Because I remember sometimes on the Enterprise, I've seen some episodes of Star Trek. Not. I'm not like a huge fan of it. But I've seen some episodes where there's literally like three people on the ship. It's hard to. T and again, it's sort of hard to tell how big it is. Um, well, from what I've seen, maybe it's. Maybe when it's like landing on the pl on the surface of a planet, it's easy to see. Um, someone in the comments who who knows more about Star Trek than I do, because literally all I've seen is like little clips of it on YouTube, like I've never actually watched it. Maybe I should go and look and find out for next episode. Um, but I imagine that an Earthling cruiser is about the size of the Enterprise, maybe. So maybe that's sort of a, sort of roughly the sort of scale that we're talking about. But then an Urquan Dreadnought seems like it would be quite big. Um, and the Korar and, and maybe Shamur as well. The Shamur reminds me a lot of the Star Wars X-Wing. I don't know whether there was a bit of, like, a reference there or something, um, but it does look a bit like that. So maybe it can't it can't be the size of next week, though, obviously. The next week, if it's one person. Um, but yeah, the size the sizes I don't know much about. Anyway, uh, this battle is nearly over. Oh my goodness, it's so it's so long. I remember actually doing this. Um, I'm rec I'm recording my voice over the top of this. Um, because there's absolutely no way, I don't know if you think that I'm an absolute pro and can just sort of chill out while doing these fights. I'm like really concentrated hardcore when I was actually doing this live. Um, I, I decided that for these sort of uh, episodes where I'm basically just going to be doing these really quite difficult fights, um, I'm going to just record over the top of them. Um, well, we'll see. Um, I, 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 I'm just, I do comment over the top of them. Um, but if it's if it's like not very good commentary, which it wasn't in this case because I was just so like concentrated, I wasn't like saying anything. I was like tryharding really bad, so I decided to scrap that commentary. So I'm just doing it over the top. Um, but if we get some good stuff, then then uh, then we'll see it. It should be funny. 
Um, but these these battles are just really really boring, really. Like they just take ages. Um, there's also another problem with this episode. Uh, it's only going to be a short one today. It's only about 12, 12 minutes long because uh, I accidentally ballsed up some of the numbering of my uh, of my recording, um, and so I accidentally included in my original plans. I accidentally included like the last like five or ten minutes of episode ten. I don't know how I managed it. Um, but I thought it was originally going to be much longer than this, but instead it's only about 11 or 12 minutes long. Um, come on, we're nearly done. It's been a little while since I recorded this, so there we go. So I can't quite remember exactly what happened, but there we are. We've, we've done it. Fuifo has won, once again. Um, but we're starting to get an idea now, especially with these fights, of what, why, why this is quite a difficult challenge. Um, because you're a little bit on the ropes for most of the game. Another probe here. Get rid of that. One of the best choices we made to uh, to get get rid of the probes straight away. Get the trans tr uh, the destruct sequence, self destruct sequence really early on, so we don't have to worry about these probes. Because in the first couple of episodes, my God, it was so annoying. Um, it actually turns out that Fuifo is really really good at destroying the probes, but but um, back like two years ago or whatever, when I uh, first started this playthrough, um, I didn't know that. And it was sort of quite difficult to destroy the probes, but it turns out that if you, when when the probe and Fuifo leave the screen, if if Fuifo just turns around at the right moment and starts travelling in the other direction, the probe will try to follow you across the entire uh, screen, and then you can literally just use the butt missiles, and eventually you'll just kill it. But you have to sort of time it quite well, and if you don't, then it's basically just the probe just keeps going off the screen all the time. Um, and that's what happened originally. But oh, there we go. That's the sort of position we want to be in. Um, but yeah, so there's little tricks that you learn by just failing over and over again at these fights. Um, trust me, there's a lot of outtakes here. Like, don't think I'm a pro and I'm just doing them off the cuff. Having said that, actually, I say there's a lot of outtakes, but so far, this episode, there's been no outtakes. Last episode, there were a lot of outtakes, but I got better and this episode is all, all flush so far, which is pretty nice. Um, so... While we're doing this, maybe we should talk about what we've got to do next in this episode, in this, uh, in this game. Um, we've got to go to Thrada to the Thradash because we need to get the Aqua Helix. We've already got the um, Clindle Spear. Uh, what's it called? The Clear Spindle. I, I don't know why I just said the Clindle Spear. I just think I said. Um, yeah, we've got the Clear Spindle. We need the Aqua Helix from Thradash. I'm pretty sure that we're going to have to destroy like 25 of them. Which I'm slightly dreading because I don't know if I have any like particularly good ships against the Thradash. Um, I think the Pakunk literally is my best option, and I'm gonna have to do a lot of save scumming because even then I think it's gonna be quite difficult. A Fuifo is gonna be rubbish against the Thradash because they'll just keep dodging the missiles, and the Earthling cruiser's gonna have no chance as well. So I think it's gonna have to be the Pakunk and just like basically like just retrying and retrying until I survive. It'd be a good opportunity to regather some crew as well, because obviously the good thing about the Pekunk is that they can like, you know, regenerate crew. So that's something we definitely need to do at some point, so maybe this is a good time to start. Um, so once we got the Thr Thranash uh, on our side by destroying them, the other option of course is to um, send them to, uh, sorry, send the Ilrath up to the Thradash, but I'm not sure that you can do that if you don't visit the Starbase, because Obviously, the way you get the caster is by... Oh my god. Um, there is a lot of ships incoming. Oh, it's Pekunk. Okay, lots of them are Pekunk. Um, the way you get the caster is by waiting for the Spathy to slave shield themselves, but I'm not sure if they actually do that unless you like initiate the alliance by going to the starbase. And so I'm not going to bother even... And you have to wait a long time anyway, so I'm not going to bother with that. Um, so, but it's going to be difficult either way. So, um, the other thing I was thinking about is maybe going to Arcturus and getting the Bavixes caster. Um, that's the caster that I don't think I actually got in the original playthrough. Oh, I'll talk about it afterwards. Here's the Melnorme. I had itchy pod this morning, Captain, and here you are. What does that mean? Now, really strange. What can we do for you today? Um, we want to sell some stuff to you first of all. What would you like to sell? You've got some bio data. Should have quite a lot. Yeah, wow. Pretty good. Units of biological data we downloaded from your ship earn you six hundred eighteen credits. Pretty good. We should be able to buy loads of stuff with that. 
Um, we only need a few more technologies. How much fuel do you wish to purchase? But first of all, we want fuel, so you fill us up. To your vessel. Fantastic. Okay, let's get some. Uh, let's get some new technology. Um, I think that looking at this, oh whatever. Let's just find out what they're adding. Okay, that doesn't matter, but we'll get it anyway. Because we want to get, basically we want to get all of the lambda upgrades and then we're done. We don't want to get the last two things, which are the Hellbore Cannons and the um, Shiva Furnaces. Um, so there we go, that's the resist to earthquakes. That's auto-tracking, we don't care about that. Um, this is weather, we want that. But we don't have enough credits. So, for now, we're done. So I think we've got... A pleasure dealing with you, Captain. I don't think we have too many more things to buy. To your next visit. Which is pretty good. Anyway, um, the episode's about to end, but I'll quickly say why I didn't go to get the Bavixis caster. Apparently, it doesn't work with the Umgar. Uh, it doesn't work with the Ilrath, sorry, because the Umgar um, put in special codes into their caster. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.